Some games are so revolutionary, they can reorganize our idea of what games can actually do. Think of the way you felt when the dragon attacked you for the first time in Skyrim. When you caught the first glimpse of your character's own body in the portal. Or walking in on the grisly murder scene in Ultima 7. Baldur's Gate 3 is a game like that. Because of how incredibly good the game is, everybody is discussing one thing and one thing only. Are RPGs ever going to be the same? And should Baldur's Gate 3 set the standard, or is that too much to expect? To answer this question, let's start with defining why Baldur's Gate 3 feels so unique. The first reason is freedom. Unlike any other game I've played before, Baldur's Gate 3 is living proof that players can be trusted. Developer Larian decided not to protect players from themselves, like most titles do, with guardrails or plot armor to make sure the player chooses the correct path and doesn't just die randomly. Instead, Baldur's Gate 3 lets us find our own story, or if we want to, smash it to pieces. This way. On every step of my journey, I was free to decide who my enemies and allies were going to be. For example, when I discovered a clan of druids who were under attack from a goblin warband, I decided to help them. But I could just as easily have sided with the goblins and helped them wipe out the entire druid village. In the game, each origin character has their own background stories and secrets, and players can either ignore them or pursue them. The world is so beautifully crafted, it's impossible to resist the urge to explore it. Even the lowliest goblin foot soldier has a name and an animated face. I can't let you pass just like that. When a goblin tried to humiliate me in front of a crowd, with a roll of the dice and a persuasion check, I eventually got him to kiss my feet. All right, all right, calm down. I'll do it. Just give me a moment, sir. In the depths of a dungeon in the Underdark, I spoke with rats who warned me I was unworthy to meet their sinister goddess. Yes, even rats speak. Unworthy of dark cloak. Unworthy of dark fur. Unworthy. Daddy, chill. What's interesting, though, is that you are free to explore this tastefully appointed home, but you can also strip it down to the studs. Well, why did I say? Oh, shit! It is because of this dizzying amount of freedom that players are able to experiment. In Baldur's Gate 3, you don't always have to fight. In fact, you can avoid combat by talking yourself out of sticky situations like this one. But when you do choose to fight, the game really does encourage experimentation and always attempted to respect my decisions, regardless of how bad they were. I died five times during the tutorial alone, trying out really random and stupid stuff, but instead of being punished, it felt pretty rewarding. In this game, there are more solutions to any given problem than it first appears. And in my experience, the key to seeing them is shifting from video game brain to tabletop brain. Like a good dungeon master, Baldur's Gate 3 let me experiment with wild ideas, whether that was using a mage hand spell to toss a backpack to an explorer stranded in a forest or dragging boxes and barrels around to create barricades against enemies. Whenever I came up with a harebrained scheme, it felt like Baldur's Gate 3 at least made an honest attempt to let me try it out. Thank you. Because of this freedom and experimentation, Baldur's Gate 3 sparked a revolution in the genre we hadn't really witnessed since Fallout 3 or Dragon Age Origins. There's been a lot of talk online about whether this game sets a new standard for RPGs and the game's industry more broadly. And yes, as someone who has loved the game, it is fair to raise our expectations for other games based on what Larian has achieved here. But most of this discourse misses the mark because it doesn't acknowledge the remarkable context of this project. First of all, Larian is a privately owned studio that could afford to finance a long development cycle. And they spent over 20 years building a team of specialists, from designers to engineers. And second, Baldur's Gate 3 is set in the world of Dungeons & Dragons Forgotten Realms, which is arguably more popular now than it's ever been in its 40-year history. And also, D&D in general has been permeating pop culture quite a lot recently. These two elements alone account for a huge part of Baldur's Gate 3's success, and at the same time, cannot be easily replicated. 
Calling for a new standard is wrong simply because there's no one-size-fits-all solution for game development. Big franchises like Madden NFL and Call of Duty rely on the financial weight of publicly traded megacorps. At the same time, the most interesting indie games are usually completely original ideas that aren't using massively popular licenses like Dungeons & Dragons. But Baldur's Gate 3 is an important game that we'll be talking about many years from now, either as a pivotal moment for RPGs or as a missed opportunity, depending on how things go. And even if talking about a new standard doesn't really make sense, Baldur's Gate 3 demonstrated that many of the supposed genre benchmarks for RPGs can be questioned or even discarded entirely. No, not every game needs a seasonal content schedule or a battle pass. No, a game doesn't need to shower players in loot and rewards to be fun. And yes, you can trust players to find their story, or set them free to smash it to pieces. Uh.